Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at all the news and today's updates, discussing what is next in Star Stable, and we're also going to be talking about some upcoming spoilers that we have. Not going to be showing anything on screen, but we will talk about it, so have that as a warning that there will be spoilers in this video. And we're also going to look at Reddit and read some people's thoughts and opinions on Star Stable's 60k recruitment player thing that kind of went over like a lead balloon with players. So our first and biggest news of the day is that the Bazaar is back and we can get the Trackner, the Gen 3 Halflinger, the Gen 3 Arabian, and the Gen 3 Mustang. They are only discounted at the actual bazaar location though. If you go to where they're normally sold, those won't be discounted, but there is two coat colors available at the Moreland Stables for a discount. The bazaar will be ending October 9th, so if you're interested in picking up any of the breeds, you'll need to be quick about it. I personally am definitely going to be buying several there, and I'm planning on making a shopping spree video, so stay tuned for that. Another big thing in the update today is that if you go to Starshine Ranch, Horses of Yorvik is happening and there's an exclusive race. So if you want to take part in that, you need to talk with the person outside the arena gate and you will have to ride either a Tennessee walking horse or any gin, Mustang or Appaloosa. And that does include magic coat variations. We also have a new tack and outfit set, perfect for this time of year. It's called the Autumn Leaf Set, and I love the orange version. I'm definitely going to be getting that one. Also, it seems like next week will be the start of the Halloween event on October 9th, and a new season of the Jorvik Championship racing ribbon thing. Once again, I have forgot the name of it, and that's what I'm the most excited for. I really loved doing that last time. And now for some potential spoilers. Again, I'm not gonna be showing anything on the screen, just talking about it, but we do have the estimate that we're gonna be getting new coat colors on October 30th or around that time, but we still don't have any spoilers yet of the magic coat horses that we'll be getting around Halloween. Still no news on that, but the coat colors that are gonna be coming on October 30th are really interesting to say the least. I'm going to link in the description the video to CC Creations who posted the spoilers if you guys want to have a look at that. Another video that I'm going to link in the description is to a video on her channel that is the spoilers for the next two themes that we're going to be getting for home stable customization. One is a medieval theme that I really really love and the other is a gothic slash Halloween theme. So we don't have an exact date for that yet, but we do have a new estimate for when the next new breed coming to Star Stable will be. So it looks like the Norker horse will be coming sometime in November. So the last thing I want to do for the video is show you guys some other players' thoughts and opinions on Star Stable doing the 60k new player recruitment thing over on their Instagram for a supposed great award. And... It has caused some serious controversy yet again, and I'm gonna show you guys some of the opinions that people have about it. So let's start with this one. So in summary, this person is just saying how they don't see how Star Sable thought that the Medieval Festival was cool and exciting enough to bring in 60K brand new players, even non-paying ones, because it doesn't make a difference to a new potential player anyway, because they can't get to that area for so long in the game and the medieval event was so underwhelming and disappointing to a lot of players anyway that it seems weird that it launched at the same time as the 60k recruitment thing and they say if they even get those numbers i'm willing to bet the majority of it is going to be dead alt accounts rather than actual new players that'll give them more money I didn't like how the video they posted was trying to pressure and guilt the players for not managing to find 60k people to make accounts either. Like honestly, is it really worth having 60k new accounts if the majority are just going to be dead accounts that were only played a handful of times? Now personally I can't say that I felt pressured or guilted into doing it, but I can see how a lot of the younger players that are kids would have. And honestly to me I feel like that the 60k players was too like impress investors or something because then they can make a graph and be like look how many new players that we got in this amount of time and I feel like the problem with it is that 
no matter their intention, it felt like they're trying to make their own players do their work for them instead of just making the game better and where more people want to play naturally. The funniest part is they won't be brand new players. It will be existing players working together to create 60k throwaway accounts since they are counting non-Star Rider accounts. And then they mention that it reminds them of Star Stable's recruit a friend system that they had in 2020. Now, I didn't have Star Stable in 2020, so I can't really comment on that. I have wondered why they don't do like a referral system with rewards or something because I play another free-to-play game called Palea and they have that and the rewards were actually good though. So I guess that's probably why Star Staple's not doing it because they're not willing to actually give proper incentive and rewards for the referral system. It would be nice if they brought back something like that, but I, I agree, there's nothing stopping people from just creating throwaway accounts and getting the rewards for themselves, but that applies to any game. Doesn't mean that they shouldn't do it. And it would be fun for people, I guess, to have a reason to recruit their friends to it because, like, their target audience has so much sway, if you think about it. Like, my little niece that plays this game, if she wanted to, she could get all of her friends playing this game. But there's not an incentive to. There's not a reason for her to be like, hey, play this game. But if there was, like, a referral system or some kind of reward that she could get, then, yeah, maybe she would do it. As a content creator for this game, and I do think they had something like this similar in the past, but I would love it if they had like a creator code where you can use that code and get the game at a discount and then there's some sort of reward for the person whose code you use, or maybe not. Like, even if I don't get a reward, I would like to have some kind of creator code to help you guys be able to buy the game at a better discount or to be able to buy it and get some kind of bonus like more star coins or an outfit bundle or something. I'm sure SSO said they were already halfway to their goal at 30k, but now they're saying they're at 15k. How do they expect us to recruit new players without any incentives? I'm not your sales department, I'm your customer. Ooh, T. Yeah, even if they're just like making alt dead accounts, I don't think players are motivated at all to reach that goal because we've learned the hard way that when Star Sable promises good rewards and good codes and all this stuff, it never ends up being hardly anything at all. Occasionally we will get a good outfit or tack or like we just got 130 or 120 maybe, I don't know which it was, star coin code, like that's great, but they're so rare. And the majority of the time we get like a firework or a carrot and every once in a while a 20 star coin code, which is better than nothing, sure, but for all the work it takes to recruit new players, is that a good enough reward? I don't know. And another sick burn, imagine wanting to do actual content in the horse game we invested 80 plus dollars into. If they had just brought back the birthday event along with the medieval update, I think players wouldn't have complained at all. Yeah, I agree with that entirely. I think if they had just had the birthday event like usual and then maybe like a week later did the medieval area as a new permanent addition, and not tried to promote it as a vent, which it obviously wasn't. I don't think anybody would have been mad and I think there would have been a lot more understanding about what to expect from the medieval area. And I don't know why they did get rid of the birthday event or at least temporarily just for this year, maybe they're revamping it, but I still don't think that they went about the whole thing right. I've actually already done another video more in depth about the medieval event and the jousting and stuff and I guess I will go ahead and link it at the end of this video if you guys want to watch that. So that is all the news and updates to cover for right now. As always, I will keep you guys posted if anything else happens or if there's any new spoilers. After this, I'm going to go film my mini shopping spree video at the bazaar and I will have that posted in the next couple days. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time.